What's up fam, Zunnies here from All Clouded and today we're going to talk about big tobacco ready to roll on vaping in New Zealand. Alright, where do we start? So this video is basically my thoughts on an article that was written by the New Zealand Herald titled Vaping the New Oil Rush as Big Tobacco Eyes NZ. So the article basically starts off by talking about the current industry standards of vaping in New Zealand. It then moves on to say that one of their insiders, which could be anyone from somebody that's in the management team all the way down to somebody that's in distribution, which the insider basically says that they're ready to roll on the New Zealand market once that the laws and the legislations have changed. It's like a new oil oil rush i mean that stuff doesn't get taxed with excise tax and the profits are huge as soon as the legislation changes big tobacco is coming mate they just want to carry on making money and you won't be able to compete because they'll just write it in that these dairies or these shopkeepers must take their devices just like they do with their tobacco So Big Tobacco is known as the Big Five, and they're a group of companies that control 60% of the world's market of tobacco cigarettes. Now is it a surprise that they want to move on the vaping market in New Zealand? Well no, of course not. The government's applying pressure as they want to see a smoke-free New Zealand by 2025. Smoke-free meaning that there's zero cigarette use in New Zealand. Now these companies already have the means of distribution throughout every city and town, now all they need to do is just adjust. Now I work for Freezing Works in New Zealand, now all these companies, these big major companies throughout New Zealand throughout the world they all run on efficiencies how can we make profit as efficient as possible now all major companies have research market teams so no doubt they have and they will be going through plenty of vape stores they'll be scanning social medias they'll be meeting up with companies wholesalers everything that can try to make them a profit in some type of way and they're just gauging the market in New Zealand and also across the world like they've been doing in other countries like Canada UK and so on what they'll also be doing is looking into mass produced vaporizers and also a mass production of e-liquid we can purely see it in the comment that the profits are huge with the taxes that are imposed on ciggies they are huge whereas we're only simply looking at gst on devices and e-liquid now the clerk that's actually selling the tobacco or the cigarettes he's only making about a dollar to two dollars per packet that's actually sold in his store and in speaking to one of my local tobacconists he said it's about the same for the company themselves so what we can see here is that because of their actual reach of distribution they really only need to profit a dollar two dollars or three dollars of a product for them to actually be highly profitable organization now what's good about this is the accessibility to e-liquid at all times of the night if it's in servos and stuff and it's also about changing the public perception on vaping in New Zealand. Now having e-liquid and supplies readily available at servos, supermarkets and dairies then there's a lesser chance that someone who's a fresh convert or someone who's actually looking to quit cigarettes is actually going to pick up a packet when e-liquid's right next to it and it's only about a quarter of the price. What's also good is that the wider New Zealand community of supermarkets and servos are actually stocking vaping products and devices I think it will really change the public perception on vaping in general however what I absolutely hate about this is that these big tobacco companies will now be associated with the vaping industry in New Zealand it can also bring somewhat of a distrust to the community because the last product that these big tobacco companies have pushed and have got people addicted to is prematurely killing off a billion lives and we also move into another range of issues one of the local tobacconists in town he's sitting outside the shop puffing on his smoke and he's selling e-cigarettes and then when asked about the juice and the mods and devices you know just general general stuff that probably anybody who vapes right, right down to the fresh converts and the fresh people that are on started devices they know more than this dude he didn't even have a clue on what he's actually selling we also have a big issue with market pricing now it's obvious if you have 20 stores in a town or a city opposed to somebody that has one the person who owns the 20 stores can lower the price in a stock because he has the reach of distribution now what if you had distribution to 20 to 100 outlets in every town and city in New Zealand what we now have is market dominance with the ability to determine market prices. Now will they be selling things like Teslas and Revengers and tubes and that? I highly doubt it. But what they can easily do is apply their pressure on the e-liquid market in New Zealand. Now they have the ability to outsource cheap labour in countries like China and India where they can have production lines producing 100 gallon drums of e-liquid and it's only going to cost them a pittance to make. Now am I speculating? Well yes I probably am. I'm pure and simply just raising my views and my concerns on the issue now my views could be totally wrong they might approach vendors with big checks and say hey we're only here to help we just want to jump on board we want to make New Zealand smoke free 
January 2025, we're just sick of selling this evil product that we've been doing for so long and we've just been killing tons of people from cancer and diseases. And sure enough, only time will tell. Now anybody that's currently at an intermediate or advanced level of vaping, they will undoubtedly never support or purchase from anybody that's associated with these big tobacco companies and they'll always purchase from their local or any recognized vendor in New Zealand. But we must remember that cloud chasers, meckheads, trickers, coilers and all the DIY makers in New Zealand, we are highly active members of our community but we are the minority. We're somewhere outnumbered about 4 to 1. So how can we combat the move from big tobacco if they decide that they're not going to play fair and they're going to do a command and conquer policy? Simply us as the consumers, we are the buying power. If in any way, shape or form they try to apply pressure and put the squeeze on our New Zealand vendors which have been here since day one, we do our bit to boycott them. We get everyone we know that convert over or are using vaping as a tool to quit, we get them to go to our New Zealand recognised vendors. Our vendors are the people that have left their jobs and have taken a huge risk by actually opening a store and giving us, the consumer, the ability to access to these life changing products and they genuinely care about helping you quitting smoking. And if you go further than beginner kits, they're always there to support you, to find your own little subculture that's in this diverse community that's in vaping. Our word of mouth and our consumer buying power, absolutely nobody can take that from us. Be pro advocacy, be pro to supporting your local, and with that being said, don't forget fam, like, comment, share and subscribe, hit that notification button so you can see when my next video is coming out, and as always, keep it cloudy fam.